Heavenly Father, I will say thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for who you are, Father, be thy exalted. Thank you for everything you do in our lives. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way. Father, we dedicate, we commit tonight, meeting into your hands. Father, I pray through us tonight. Visit us. Do what only you can do. Do what only you can do. Transform our lives tonight. Transform our lives tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Once again, I say welcome. I welcome in the name of Jesus Christ to our meeting, our prayer tonight. I pray the Lord um, visits every one of us tonight in Jesus' name. Um, Sister Oni, over to you. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so praise God. Um, so for tonight, the prayers that I, I drafted up tonight are dealing with um, just claiming victory over any um, current battle or long-standing battle or um, anything we may be facing currently or just praying towards the future. You know, Bertel always mentions that even as we are planning, the devil's also planning like steps ahead. So we ourselves need to be prepared for whatever may come our way. Um, I'm going to start by reading um, Psalms 144 verses, Psalms 144 verses 1. And I'm going to read it in um, the NOT version. Psalm 144, Psalm 144 verse 1, it says, Praise the Lord, who is my rock. He trains my hands for war and gives my fingers skill for battle. So reading this, I was like, okay, so what's the difference between war and a battle? But what I found is that war is like a series of battles, a series of fights. And a battle is specific. It's designed for a specific place, specific time. Like it just deals with what's like current, what's now. And a war is a much more broader thing. So as we pray tonight, I want us to pray. I want, I pray that the Holy Spirit gives us, you know, divine strategy to, you know, against whatever specific battle you may be facing, whether it's um, relational, spiritual, emotional, physical, mentally, whatever battle. I'm just praying that tonight after we pray these prayers that we'll have victory over whatever battle that we're facing. You cut out. Oi. We can't hear you anymore. Oh man, something is wrong. Can you hear me now? We can hear you no. now. <laughs> we lost you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Probably my AirPods. Pray that <laughs> someone blesses me with new ones. Um, <laughs> what did you after, last hear? I don't know. What did you guys said, last hear? After you said that battle is specific and war is more general. And so as we pray. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay, okay, okay. I don't know. where. What did you guys last hear? Can you hear me? Okay. You were, hello, Owen, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You were, trying, you were defining the difference between the war and, okay. um, and the battle. Got you. Okay, so I said so much after that. <laughs> so we're going to reverse really fast. Okay, so like, yeah, so war is like a series of battle, but a of battles like being fought um but a battle itself is specific designed for it literally has the specifics of the time the place everything is specific so we're going to deal with those specific battles you know that anyone may be facing um so i said at first we're going to cry out to god ask him to hear our prayers you know that he that he answers our cries for help during whatever specific battle we may be facing then we're going to activate the power that is within us 
that we have as children of God. We're going to pray that we're always on the right side of whatever battle that we are facing, and we're actually going to attack whatever it is that we're facing. So I'm going to read a couple of scriptures, so you guys got to bear with me. I won't take your time. So my first scripture is going to be Psalms chapter 20, verse 9. Psalms 20, verse 9 in the NLT version, it says, give, give victory to our king, O Lord. Answer our cry for help. The next one is in that same chapter 20, verse 1. It says, in the times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. And then the last one is one that um, Bertaiwa often quotes is Psalm 50, verse 15. Psalm 50, verse 15, it says, then call, call on me when you are in trouble. And I will rescue you and you will give me glory. So our first prayer tonight is that, Lord, as we make our cry, as we as we make our, our petitions to you, as we cry out for help for whatever battle that we may be facing, you yourself, you know the specific battle that you're facing currently. Um, that as we as we as we make our request to you, that he hears us, that he answers us, that 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 he will not pass us by as we are making our request. Prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we come before you and we ask, Lord, that you hear our cries, we hear our petitions, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you answer every single one of our requests tonight as we are, as we are standing here, Lord, ready to fight whatever battle that is in front of us, whatever battle that we are facing currently. Father God, we pray that you hear our cry, Lord. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we ask that you answer every single one of our requests tonight as we are fighting whatever battles we may be facing specifically tonight, Father God, in whatever areas of our life, Lord Jesus, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you hear our cry, 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 Lord, hear our cry, Lord, hear our cry, Lord, hear our cry, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. And another thing that I failed to mention that in the beginning, like some battles that we're facing may not even be something that we have done. Maybe it's something that your parents have done or your parents' parents have done that you're just reaping the consequences of it, which is why it's important that we we target like the root, the specifics of whatever it is that we may be facing. Um, so now moving on, I want us to activate that power that is in us. We trust and we believe that the Lord is going to hear our cry tonight. And now we're going to activate the power that is already within us as, as children of God. So the first um, scripture that I have is Luke 10, 19, which I, I think we read um, yesterday. So Luke 10, 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. In the NLT version, it says, look, I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. Let me read it in the, um, the King James Version. We're reading Luke 10 verses 19. And in the King James Version, it says, behold. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The next scripture that I have is 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Pardon me if I'm going too fast for y'all, but I hope you guys are following along. So 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7. It says, for God has and timidity, but of power, love, and of self-discipline. I'm going to read it in the King James Version as well. It says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, 
but of power, love, and of a sound mind. And then the last scripture that I have for us in that activating power is 1 John chapter 4, verses 4. It says, but you belong to God, my dear children. You have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit that lives in the world. I'm going to read it in King James. It says, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is within the world. Why did I read all those scriptures? It's just to encourage us to know that as long as we are on the side of the Lord, as long as we have the Holy Spirit in us, there is nothing, no power, no force, no enemy that can defeat us. And Thank you, Holy Spirit. Something that we need to know and that um, Bertawa actually encouraged me two days ago, I believe, is that it's in the time, in your darkest times or in the time of, um, in the time of battle is when you truly see what you carry inside. Now we can sit here, we can activate that power that is within us, but if we don't know what we carry, how useful is that power to us? You feel what I'm saying? Like I'm reading these scriptures, you know, greater is he that's within you. God has not given me the spirit of fear. You know, we have authority over the enemy. But if you don't understand the truth of these scriptures, these scriptures are very limited to you. You know, the Bible says in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So if you don't know the truth of these scriptures, if you don't know the power of these scriptures, it won't work as well for you. Do you get what I'm saying? So not only do I want us to activate the power that is already within us because we are children of God, but that God will reveal to us the truth of his word so it can work in its full effect. I hope that makes sense. Like, I hope you guys are carrying along. So that prayer is twofold. Like, Holy Spirit, activate the power that is already within me. Based on the scriptures that we read tonight, that I just read in this activating power, is that because the Holy Spirit in it is in us, greater is he that is within us. We have this power. But that power can only work if you know the truth of the power. So the prayer is twofold. Lord, activate the power in me. And also, Lord, reveal to me the truth of your scripture so that I may use this power to its full potential. Prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, because I am one of yours and I have true power inside of me and greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. Holy Spirit, I ask, Lord Jesus, that you activate the power that you have given me. Activate the power that you have given me. Activate the power that you have given me, Lord. And I pray, dear Lord Jesus, that you reveal to me the truth of your scripture, that I may use it to its full potential in the mighty name of Jesus. Reveal the truth of your word, Lord. 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 Reveal the truth of your word, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Reveal the truth of your word, Lord, and activate the power that is within me, Lord. 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 In in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So moving on. So we made our, our request known to, Lord, to God. We asked him to hear us. We asked him to activate the power that is within us. We asked him to reveal the truth of his word that we may, you know, use his word to its full potential. And now I want us to make sure that we're always on the right side of the battle. You know, so I have some some scriptures to really um, explain what, I, what I'm trying to get at here. So first, second, not first, second chronicle, the first scripture that I have under this being on the right side is second Chronicles chapter 25. Second Chronicles chapter 25. So I'm not going to read the whole thing, but on your spare time, you guys can read it on your own to understand like context of this scripture. Um, but when I was trying to find um, uh, verses to help me in this prayer time of like, you know, victory in battle, um, this scripture came up. Um, so basically, just to give you context, there was a king. His name was Amaziah. I'm a, I think I'm pronouncing that right. Basically, um, 
he did his own thing. This is how I'm going to summarize it. And it didn't end well for him. Right. So I'm going to read some some verses from this um, passage so you guys can kind of understand where I'm getting at here. So. In Second Chronicles 25, verse two, in verse two, it says Amaziah did what was pleasing to the Lord's sight, but not wholeheartedly. I'm going to read that in uh, King James as well. It says, and he did, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. I just want you guys to keep that scripture in the back of your mind as I move on. And then if we fast forward down to verse seven and eight, right? So basically he was preparing for battle. He had his own idea of how he wanted to do the battle. He wanted, you know, but then this man of God came to him. So verse seven and eight, it says, but a man of God came to him and said, your majesty, do not hire troops from Israel for the Lord is not with Israel. He will not help those of Ephraim. Verse eight says, if you let them go with your troops in battle, you will be defeated by the enemy, no matter how well you fight. God will overthrow you for he has the power to help you or to trip you up. My the main point that I have here is that is the end of verse eight. It says God will overthrow you for he has the power to help you or to trip you up. Now, if you read the, the rest of this um, chapter, you will know that he did follow the instructions and he did not. Um, he did not hire the truce, but he ended up like serving an idol or something afterward. And his end was not great. I'm going to just say that right there. So what I'm trying to get at is that. In order to be on the right side of the Lord, we need to be obedient. We need to follow his instruction. And the reason I told you to um, remember verse two in your heart is because it says he did what was pleasing to the Lord, but not with a right heart. See, uh, sometimes we may think we're doing something right because we say, okay, yeah, I'm following God. I'm a Christian. I'm doing it this way. But it says the Bible in first Samuel 17, it says man looks at the outward appearance, but it's God that looks at the heart. You know what I'm saying? So we can be saying, yeah, we're doing it right. But if your heart is not in alignment, you know, it's the same as not fully obeying God. So we need to make sure that even as God is instructing us, giving us strategic ways to fight these specific battles in our life, that we also um, yield to his instruction. Because what does it say in verse eight? The end of verse eight, it says, God will overthrow you for he has the power to help you or to trip you up. Remember my, 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 my title for this section is being on the right side of God is either you will stumble or you'll be on the right side. It's either God will help you or either God will trip you up. And I'm, I'm believing that all of us want God to help us. So I'm moving along. I'm moving fast. And then Psalm 78 verse nine. Psalm 78 verses nine. It says, I'm going to read nine and 10, sorry, nine and 10. It says, the warriors of Ephraim, though armed with bows, turned their backs and fled on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his instructions. So from the first scripture, we read that God will either help you or he will trip you up. Here, these people did not remember God's covenant, basically God's instruction over their lives. And they ended up fleeing from the battle. They turned their backs. And I pray that we will all be on the right side of the battle in Jesus' name. And then the last scripture is Joshua 6, verse 10. And this is a familiar story for all of us. I, I believe so. So context of this, this is basically the wall of Jericho um, and their instructions for how they will, how the wall will fall down. So I'm going to read verse 10. And it says, this is Joshua speaking. He says, do not shout, do not even talk. Joshua commanded, not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout, then you will shout. If you know this story, you know that it ended in victory. So how does this all tie together with what, I'm, what I was saying? If we follow the instruction of God, if we are obedient to his word, we will always be on the right side. We will always receive the help. We will not be tripped up. You know, so our prayer tonight is that God help me to be sensitive to your instructions, obedient to your word, not just by my words, 
Because what did I read in 2 Chronicles 25, verse 2? It said he was doing things pleasing to the Lord, but not in his heart. So not help me to be obedient, not just by my words, but by my heart. And that and in my spirit and in my mind, so that I may always be on the right side of the battle. I know that was a bit lengthy, but does that make sense? Makes sense, yes. So I'm going to repeat it again. It says, Holy Spirit, help me to be sensitive to your instructions, obedient to your instructions, not just by my words, but in my heart, in my spirit, in my mind, that I may always be found on the right side of the battle. Prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I pray as you are instructing me, as you are giving me strategic plans for battle, for whatever I am facing, Lord Jesus, I pray, Heavenly Father, Holy Spirit, help me to be sensitive to your instruction, obedient, not just by my words, but in my heart heart, in my spirit, in my mind, Lord Jesus, that I may always be found on the right side of the battle, that I may always be victorious in whatever battle that I'm facing in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to be sensitive, God. Help me to be sensitive, God. Help me to be sensitive, God. Help me to be sensitive, God, and yield to your instruction and yield to your instruction, Lord. Yield to your instruction and be obedient, not just by my words, Lord, but in my spirit, in my mind, and in my heart in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to be obedient, Lord, not by my words, but by my spirit, by my heart, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your word says, Lord, that you look at the heart. Men look at the outward appearance. I pray, Heavenly Father, that my heart will always be aligned with your instructions in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to be obedient, God. Help me to be obedient, God. Help me to be obedient, God. Help me to be obedient, God, that I may always be found on the right side of the battle in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And then lastly, for me to wrap up. So we talked about crying out to God for our help. We talked about activating the power that is within us. We talked about God revealing the truth of the scripture that we may use its power to its full potential. And we talked about being on the right side of the battle through our obedience to his instruction. Now, we fight whatever battle it is that we are facing. So I have a couple of scriptures to help us to fight. And you you know whatever battle is you're facing. Like I said in the beginning, it can be your spiritual battle. It can be physical. It can be mental. It can be emotional. It can be something that you notice a specific pattern in your life from your parents to your grandparents. Whatever it is, you know the specific battle that you are facing currently. So I have a couple of scriptures here. Um. First, we're going to read Isaiah 54, Isaiah 54, verse 15 and 17. So Isaiah 54, verses 15 and verses 17. Verse 15 is one of my favorite verses. I'm going to read it in the King James Version. Actually, let me read it in NLT first, and then I'll read it to you in King James Version. So verse 15, it says, if any nation comes to fight you, it is not because I sent them. Whoever attacks you will go down in defeat. I'm going to read it in King James. This is verse 15. It says, behold, surely, it says, behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. Sorry, I'm like moving my notes around. So we're going to pray. You know the battle to a specific battle. I don't know what specific battle you're you're facing, you're facing, but we're going to pray that God, whatever power, whatever force that is fighting against me in my career, in my relationship, in my finances, in my spiritual life, that they will fall for my sake in the mighty name of Jesus. That whosoever is attacking me will end up attacking themselves. That their plan will go back to their center in the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, for every battle that I'm facing, whatever power, whatever force, whatever enemy is fighting against me, God, that they will fall for my sake in the name of Jesus. Fall for my sake in the name of Jesus. Fall for my sake in the name of Jesus, fall for my sake in the name of Jesus, whosoever, whatsoever power, whatsoever force, whatsoever enemy, Lord Jesus, that is fighting against me, they shall begin to attack themselves now, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Because of time, I'm going to just omit some of them. I'm going to read Isaiah 50, verse 7. 
Isaiah 50, verse 7. Isaiah 50, verse 7. Um, another one of my favorite verses. It says, Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, determined to do his will, and I know that I will not be put to shame. So our prayer from that verse is, God, align me with your will that I may not be disgraced in the time of battle. You know the specific battle that you are facing. And we talked about being an, being obedient. You know, being obedient, if you follow his instruction, you will follow his will. You know, so we're going to pray that, God, align me with your will that I may not be disgraced in the time of battle. Prayer in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, I pray that you align me with your will, Father God. Align me with your will, Father God, that I will not be disgraced in the time of battle in the mighty name of Jesus. That I will not be put to shame in the time of battle in the mighty name of Jesus. Align me with your will, Lord. Align me with your will, Lord. Align me with your will, Lord. Align me with your will that I may not be put to shame. That I may not be put to shame. That I I may not be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Align me with your will, Lord. Align me with your will, Lord, that I will not be disgraced in the time of battle. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And lastly, because I'm, I'm going to take some out because of time. Psalm 44, verses 5, verses 4 and 5. Psalm 44, verses 4 and 5. Psalm 44, verse 4 and 5, it says, you are my king and my God. You command victories for Israel. Only by your power can we push back our enemies. Only in your name can we trample over, over our foes. So we're going to pray that God, in your name, trample over every force, over every power, over any any enemy that is fighting against me, fighting against me in whatever battle, prayer in Jesus' name. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that by your name, that you trample for every power, every Every force over any enemy that is fighting against in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, by the power of your name, by the power of your name, trample over every foe in my life, over any enemy in my life, over any force, any power that is fighting against me in the mighty name of Jesus. By the power of your name, Lord Jesus, trample over every power, over every force that is fighting against anything in my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Trample them, Lord. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And that's what I have for Taiwo. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Um, Kenny, you can go ahead. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So um, thank you first for the opportunity and the privilege to do this. And um, what I have is not really like a preaching, it's just an instruction. And I would suggest that everyone pay attention and listen. Um, the instruction is given in, I think about five different instructions, but the major um, chapter given to me is in Joel chapter two, the book of Joel chapter two and the examples given to me is in Matthew chapter 24 and Matthew chapter 25. I ask that please, I mean, who am I to ask you to do something, but I'm just a mouthpiece, please. I'm asking everyone that please, when you get to your, your how do you say, prayer closet, to go and study those chapters. We do not have time to dive into them, but I will just give the instruction as it was given to me. And Sister Onion, you did well because the things you talked about kind of match. I asterisk them in my notes because they kind of match. When you mention instruction, you repeated instruction, you repeated hearts. I have that on my, on what I have here in my Hello, notes. Kenny. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Can, you, can you repeat those Bible scriptures again? George Joel chapter two, chapter two and Matthew, mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 24 and Matthew chapter 25. Okay. And um, 
what's it called? You repeated instruction, you repeated hearts, you repeated victory and obedience. So please, God is no man that will lie, neither is he the son of man that will repent. Whatever he says he will do, he will do it. One thing he first told me to emphasize is how much he loves everyone on this platform. That he loves every one of us, but at the same time, he wants us to know how he feels. So the first thing in the, um, on the list he told me is for every one of us, including myself, to remember the day of the Lord is coming near. The day of the Lord is coming near. The Bible reference for that is in Joel chapter 2, verse 1. Sorry, Matt is just um okay. Let me just quickly read it. Um, the day of the Lord, um, Joel 2, verse 1, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. And um, if we go to Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. Sorry, I'm just trying to. Matthew chapter 25, verse 13. If you are there before me, it's okay, you can read it. Anybody, only anyone, please. Right. Matthew 25, verse 13. 13, yes. You want it in King James or NLT? Any, any, it doesn't matter, anyone. Okay, it says, so you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or hour of my return. All right, so um, thank you, Antony. So um, what the Lord is saying to us is that we do not know the time that is coming. And like you said in the world, that the coming is going to be like a thief in the night. And he made it clear to us in Matthew 24, if you look at maybe the previous chapter before that one, Matthew 24, verse 36, it says that, but of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my father only. So nobody knows the hour that he will be coming. Nobody knows when the son of man shall appear. But to the glory of God, I want to believe that everyone on this platform, we have given our lives to Christ. When I got a call to do this, I didn't have any topic in my head. I just prayed to the Holy Spirit to tell me exactly what he wants the people to hear. And he emphasized, let them know that I love them so much. Let them know this is my heart. This is what I'm concerned about right now. So I don't want to overflog it because of our time. Please, again, read all those things on your own at home. The, the uh, second coming of the Lord is near. And he told us to read chapter Matthew chapter 25. The example given to us are the 10 virgins. The 10 virgins, five of them were prepared. Five were not prepared. And the Bible called them foolish. That means that a lot of us are called into the Christian fold. But is it all of us that are prepared? Is it all of us that are working on the second coming? Again, he has told us that he's not going to tell us when it's coming. He's not going to tell us that it's going to be so, so, day, so, so, yes, so, so, time. There's going to be a lot of first prophets that will say they are Jesus, but they are not Jesus. But he told us, do not be deceived. He even said, if you read Matthew 24 very well, that even some of believers, we believers, some of us will be deceived. I pray in the name of Jesus, we shall not be deceived in Jesus' name. Um, also, um, the second thing that he said to me is, um, call to repentance, turn to me with all your hearts. That's why I said what sister when you said, it matches, call to repentance, turn to me with all your heart. He emphasized to me that some of us, it's like our, our heart, we love God, but our mind is still up and down. Our heart is still, you know, we are not into it very well yet. You understand what I'm saying? Like our heart is still going dilly dally, dilly dally. You know, one day will be cold, tomorrow will be hot. You know, God wants all of us on this platform, you know, to be hundred with him, be sincere with him. God loves sincerity. You know, that is one of the, the things that made God love David. David, he wasn't a perfect man, 
he committed sin, but he was hundred with God. He was sincere with God. Bible says, who, who can, who shall, sorry, I feel like crying. My heart is heavy. Um, who shall send, you know, the heel of the Lord? You know, he that has a clean hands and a pure heart, you know, let's search ourselves. If, you, if um, you know, search your inner heart. Let the Holy Spirit help you search yourself. Holy Spirit, search me, you know, let's pray. Let's just take a quick moment to pray that Holy Spirit, search me true and true. Search me. If there's any iniquity in me, if there's anything found in me, Holy Spirit, have mercy on me. Help me in any way, whatever is taking my heart from me, my heart away from you, that is not letting me love you hundred, that is not letting me be a sincere person before you, that is not letting me be a person of integrity before you god have mercy on me you know have mercy on me please let's pray father lord god we pray tonight oh god that you search our heart and you search us true and true anything in our heart in our hearts in our life oh god that is not bringing us closer to you that make us feel like we are being distracted here and there we ask for mercy tonight in the name of jesus we ask for your mercy oh god in the name of jesus we ask for your mercy oh god we ask that you forgive us we ask the lord that you your love be shared abroad in our hearts once again that you let us focus on you and decide help us to to make a decision help us to decide and be determined just like um Taiwo told us yesterday that we should decide we have to decide in order to arise that yes i want to be for god you know like is it that you or no one else is it that god or god father help us in the name of jesus we have no power of our own or strength to do it we have a lot of distractions social media everything going on you know um, economic situation, a lot of things going on, oh God, but we ask on behalf of everyone on this platform, help us, oh God, that our hearts will draw closer to you, that our hearts will hunger and thirst for more of you, that our hearts will genuinely love you, that even if we are seeking power, seeking anything, what matters the most is to come back to you and love you with all our hearts, oh God, we ask in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, pray. Yes, yeah, so, um, um that's um what's it called again what i was talking about about bringing our heart is in um joel chapter 2 verse 12 to 13 joel chapter 2 you please help me joel chapter 2 verse 12 to 13 12 to 13 yes please joel chapter 2 verses 12 to 13 all right it says that that is why the lord says turn to me now while there is time give me your hearts come with fasting weeping and mourning verse 13 don't tear your clothing in grief but tear your hearts instead return to the lord your god for he is merciful and compassionate slow to get angry and filled with unfailing love he is eager to relent and not punish Thank you. You know, he's still telling us again that no matter what we have done, no matter what we are struggling with every night, and that way is preaching and it's talking, whatever you are struggling with, whatever you are dealing with, if you feel like you can't say it in the open, you whatever you need help, text me, this and that. You know, that is an example of wisdom calling on the streets. The Bible talks about when wisdom is on the streets, screaming and giving instruction, but nobody is listening. That is opportunity. Whatever it is you, you are dealing with, like Sister Oye said in, about finding victory in something, whatever it is you are dealing with, please, let your heart bring that heart and bring that body into Christ tonight. Bring it to Calvary tonight and ask God to help you. You know, He's loving. He say He's mercy. My version says He is gracious and merciful. He's slow to anger. He will not be angry with you. He knows what you are doing. Trust me. The time that me and you are committing sin, is just his eye cannot be old iniquity, but he knows that we are committing sin. So there's really nothing you want to hide that he doesn't know already. You understand? But God is calling us tonight to repentance. He wants to give us victory in all those challenges. Trust me. He wants, if Jesus, if he can give you the only son that he has, if he can give us Jesus, what can't he give us? If we are looking for fame, you are looking for money, you are looking for power, you are looking for everything. Everything is in Christ Jesus, but he wants our hearts. 
He wants our heart. He likes anybody that has a contrite heart, a broken spirit. That's what God is looking for. He wants us to come back home. He's, he's telling us again that he loves us, he's kind, and he's, he's, um, he, he, he doesn't relent in showing mercy to us. Praise the Lord. You know, another thing God wanted me to talk about again is that when we come back, when we retrace our step and be hundred with God. I continue to use the word be hundred with God in the sense that a lot of us are just, you know, we are very active in church. We are everywhere. This program, we are there. That program, we are there, you know, but how is our work with God? How is our relationship with God? How is our heart? How is our heart towards our fellow human being? How is our heart towards, you know, like what Antirin said, if you are given an instruction and you follow the instruction, but your heart is not even there, you know, all those things, we got to check ourselves tonight. But God is telling us the third or fourth instruction, I, I am not keeping count, is that after all those things, after we have returned from our journey of, of not being hundred with God, after we have returned, he will deliver us, he will restore us, he will restore everything, whatever you are struggling with, he will deliver you. Whatever you have lost and you are praying for God to bless you with, he will do it for you. It's not as if his love is um, conditional. God's love is not conditional. But right now, God's heart is so. God is like, what he's trying to say is, I'm prioritizing things for you. I'm putting priority. You know, sometimes we're asking for something, something, but what God is expecting us to be asking for is different from what we are putting face. You understand what I'm saying? So God is prioritizing arrangements. You understand? So he's saying, um, please, Antonio, let me go to um, that Joel chapter 2, verse 24 to 27. Joel chapter 2, verse 24 to 27. Mm -hmm. I'm trying said, to skip all the verses so that we can just go straight to the point. Okay. It says the threshing, you said to 26 or 27? 27. 27. Please pay attention to 24 to 27. These are the things the Lord says he will do after we have returned our hearts, ourselves back to God. You understand? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. It says the threshing floors will again be piled high with green. And the presses will overflow with new wine and olive oil. The Lord says, I will give you back what you lost to the swarming locusts, the hopping locusts, the stripping locusts, and the cutting locusts. It was I who sent this great destroying army against you. 26. Calm down, calm down, calm down, please. Calm down, I'm sorry. You see, 24 and 25, when you said that, it reminded that um, the um, Asha Rit give you a flow of new wine and oil. It reminded me of the dream I had on some days ago. I shared it with Taiwo in the parking lot. I was rushing, but it was a, it was short what I told him simply because when I woke up, I didn't remember the faces of everybody that was in that dream. I only remembered um, Oyin's face. It was only Sister Oyin's face that I remembered in that dream. We were many. It was a safe there was a rain pouring and they just match us. It was like a, you know, like when army just walk, they just match us into a room. The, the pastorates were sitting outside, like mommy, titi, pastor, Mrs. Zulu, they were outside. The pastorate was sitting outside and we match into, into, um, what's it called? that room when we got to that room there was like a big pot the pot was fancy very fancy very big and there were a lot of jackets inside a lot of jackets different colors of jackets and there was fire at the bottom but you cannot see the fire but you can feel the heat the heat was intense and the jackets were there and all of us they made us stand around the the big pot and we had like sticks in our hand and we were turning we were turning that um pot the jacket inside we were turning it turning it turning it after a while the jacket got very hot and everybody started putting on their jacket everybody started putting on their jacket and as soon as everybody put on their jacket we marched out of that that um room and we were going the rain that was pouring it was not affecting any one of us we were just going and i woke up and 
it bothered me a little bit, but same time it didn't bother me because we just finished a revival, you know. So when God gives you a mantle of fire, I asked myself, okay, the thing was very hot. We wore it, we didn't get burned. Okay, so that's a positive one. You understand what I'm saying? God is willing to pour his spirit. God is willing. The, the mantle is already out there. The mantle is given to every one of us. You know, I mean, I don't remember everybody's face except on his face, you know, but the point here is God is willing, he's ready. He wants to do it. You are calling for revival. He wants to do revival, but you cannot put, um, how do you say, what do you call it? Old new wine in old skin bag, right? Please, anybody understand that? Yeah. So please. yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You cannot, God wants us to be like, live a holy life. You are not perfect, but be intentional with God. Be intentional, make up your mind. Don't be today in church, next week, you know, you follow people to club, you know, stand your ground for holiness. That's what God wants. You understand what I'm saying? So um, I'm going to the last one. He now said to me, he promised, I wrote the way he, I wrote it, he promised to pour his spirit on all flesh. And before I go to that, that verse 25 that Sister Oni was saying, he said, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the, and the chewing locust. Then the part that scare me, that I want you to pay attention to, my great army, which I sent among you. That is to say, sometimes we may go through a hard hardship in life, not because God wants us to go through hardship, but because sometimes he's using it to call us to order. You understand what I'm saying? Because some people don't pray until they have problem. I don't know if you have noticed. Some people, until they, they have big challenges, then they remember that there's God. Some people don't remember God until things are hard for them. So sometimes that works. But I pray that the Lord will show us mercy tonight. And also, um, Sister, will you please finish reading to 27, please? Okay, so 26 says, once again, you will have all the food you want and you will praise the Lord your God who does these miracles for you. Never again will my people be disgraced. Verse, 20, verse 27, then you, will know, then you will know that I am among my people Israel, that I am the Lord your God and there is no other. Never again will my people be disgraced. Amen. You see, God is still assuring us. He corrects us, but he corrects us in love. He has said what he wants to say at the beginning. And now he's telling us now what he will do with us. Okay, now the last instruction he gave me, he said, he promised to pour his spirit on all flesh. Everything God is trying to do using the man of God, um, Taiwo, is to help us grow, for us to be God's general for us to be on fire for God, for us to be extra hand of God on heads, you know, and if you belong to a kingdom, you cannot be behaving contrary to what the constitution of your kingdom is, you understand? So in, um, what's it called, verse 28 to 29, Sister Onion, please read verse 28 to 29. It says, then after doing all those things, I will pour out my spirit upon okay, all. Okay, calm down. Calm down. Say it again. Say that sentence again. Everybody, please listen to what she's saying. I didn't say it. It's the Bible. Please. What, what did you say again? Then after doing all those things, I after will... After doing all those things. So exactly. So you I see what I'm saying? I'm sorry, honey, I keep cutting you. <laughs> it's okay. But I wanted, to, I wanted to emphasize because I struggled to come and say this tonight, but it told me Follow it the way I told you. Just write it down the way I'm telling you. And that's why I wanted to emphasize what you said. Please continue. It says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. 29. In those days, I will pour out my spirit even on servants, men and women alike. All right, so now, the Lord, thank you, my sister. So God is saying to us that he's ready to do everything we are asking for. Everything, whether spiritual-wise, physical-wise, everything we are asking for. But first of all, our hearts must be right with God. 
our hearts must be right with God. You understand? I'm sorry, but there's this verse coming to my spirit right now, saying that you cannot give the food for the children to dogs. I'm not calling you guys dogs. I'm not calling myself dog, but it's just what the Holy Spirit just dropped in my spirit right now. That you cannot just give what belongs to the children. Sister Onye told us that whose side are you on? Are you a child? Are you God's child? Are you part of the children? Are you part of those that went into that room and got the, the um, what do you say, the mantle of fire and power? Are you part of them? Because even me, I don't know those that are part of them. The only person I remember is only in that dream. So the question that we should all go tonight and search ourselves, our spirit man, and say, Holy Spirit, search me through and through anything within me that is not letting me be hundred with you. Please expose it to me. Let me see it or remove it from my life. You know, but um, the man of God, the set man in the house, he will lead us how to pray. But I just want us to pray one prayer, please, for uh, Brother Taiwo and Sister Wumi, that the Lord will heal them and give them perfect healing in the name of Jesus, that they will be strong, they will be healthy, and they will be, you know, bouncing in the Lord again in the name of Jesus. Please, let's pray for both of them. Father, in the name of Jesus, so Lord God Almighty, we pray for Brother Taiwo and Sister Wumi, O oh God, that you will heal them perfectly and let your balm of Gilead rest upon them in the name of Jesus, from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because we know that you have done it. You said that whatever we ask in your name, that you will do it. We have asked all of this in the mighty name of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. And so I pray that God have delivered the message as is given to me. Nothing added, nothing removed, except one last thing that I just saw <laughs> is um, Obadiah 117. Obadiah 117 says, On upon Mount Zion there shall be holiness. See the arrangement. See the way the arrangement is. There shall be holiness. There shall be deliverance. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. And the same arrangement the Lord gave us tonight. This same Obadiah 117 was said in Joel chapter 2, verse 32. Please, Antonio, you read it for us, please. 32. Joel 2, 32. That's the last thing, then I hand over. Joel um, chapter 2, verse 32. Yes. And it, it says, But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. For some on Mount Zion in Jerusalem will escape, just as the Lord has said. These will be among the survivors from whom the Lord has called. Praise the Lord. My version says, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion, and remember, but Isaiah 117 says, upon Mount Zion, there shall be holiness. It says, for in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said among the remnants, among the Lord called, whom the Lord calls. We are the remnants, all of us on this platform. We are the ones the Lord has called. But he's not saying that we are not saved. But what he's saying is that we need to check ourselves. Some of us are not upright. We have given our lives to Christ, but we are still one leg in, one leg out. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Kenny. Thank you so, so much. Um, I can't thank you and Sister Onye enough. May the Lord continue to um, strengthen you, um, send you his word per time, per season. May you continue to hear from God. May you continue to hear from God. May we all continue to hear from God. And before we pray, Sister She, you can go ahead. Thank you, Uncle. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, thank you so much, Sister as well as Auntie Kenny, for sharing that word. Um, please excuse me because um, I actually had a dream last night kind of based off of what Auntie Kenny was saying about how um, there may be some, some of us that may be struggling with understanding that Christ is coming soon. I actually had a dream that the rapture was occurring and in the dream, 
my spirit was breaking because I I felt like I had served the Lord, but in my my heart, I felt like I wasn't doing it diligently. So I don't remember the verse that Sister Oni used, but it, I think, it, or maybe Auntie as well. I think it was in Joel where it says like, don't serve me with your works, but serve me with your heart. And um, after that, it was like a weight that came upon me because I knew that he was coming. Like in the moment, I knew that he was coming within those minutes, but then um, something happened. He, he didn't end up coming. And then I went back to my phone as if nothing happened. And when I woke up, my heart was broken. It was so broken because I know that so many of us have dedicated our lives to Christ. We've been through so many different things, but I just want to share that if, because I, I believe that this dream is not just for me. It was a wake up call for me because I've been saying and professing with my mouth how much I love Christ, but my heart said otherwise in the dream. So uncle, if you could just share some prayer points or um, just a word of encouragement for anybody that um, that truly does love Christ, but you haven't fully surrendered. I pray, I pray that this would be a wake up call for you as well, that it wouldn't just be an aesthetic that we're living for Christ, but we would really serve him. Because when that day comes, when those trumpets sound, there's not gonna be a moment of preparation anymore. It's over, it's game over. So I really do hope that um, everybody hears this not from me, but from the Lord himself. Like the preparation that we have started, the revival that has started, yes, it has started, but where will we be found when the day of Christ comes back? Uncle, thank you so much for allowing me to speak up. And I really do pray that this um, brings perspective to everyone as well. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, you see, all the three speakers tonight, they don't, they don't live together, but all of them have said, they have said three important things that are very unique. Your heart, turning, meaning return back to God. You see, if you observe most times, sometimes, or let me say a couple of times, you guys have seen me broke down in tears on this platform, not once, not twice, not at least maybe like three times as you've seen me broke down. And you see, you have heard me emphasize so much, so much, many times. There are many of us who are serving in church. You see, the, our, our generation, they have made us, and let me talk about, my mom is 70, she's gonna be 79, you know, our generation, she was already 79, she'll be, okay, 80, you know, next year. And what I'm trying to say is the generation of our parents, 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 they have built us, they have built us in a way that we take our service in church, we take it more important than our walk with God. I'm telling you, see, you can be walking in the house of God and not be walking with God. I've seen that many times. That's why you see people, there was someone that came to the revival program we had last Saturday. And this person was telling me that, do you know, she's a lady, she said, do you know, there are many brothers who are trying to ask me out and these guys, they're still drinking, they're clubbing, they're doing many things out there. And these guys serve, they serve in church. And she said, I'm asking myself, are we hearing the same scripture? Do we listen to the same messages? Please, I'm begging you. And that's why it grieves me. It gr I'm, I'm being honest. It grieves me when I see people so in church, they are so, so, they are so committed to church, but they are not committed to God. They are not committed to God. And it breaks my heart. It breaks, as in, you see people in church, but you see a different person out there once, and that's why when we get to wedding, when, we, when I go to weddings, you know, party, and I see the way Christians dance to worldly music, Davido, Whiskey, all this circular music, those things, it reveals what is hidden inside you. I'm telling you, there was a day I had to tell someone very close to me. I said, if you come to party and you see yourself dancing to these songs, is reflecting that something in you has not died. Something in you is still, is still hungry for what is out there. 
And you need to ask God to give you the grace. So please, I'm begging you tonight. This, God has sent these three people as, a, as an instruction again that we need to repent. We are all in our different homes right now. Please repent. I've said a couple of times here, if you want to rededicate your life, if you are not born again yet, you can, did you, did you hear what the Bible says? I was telling someone on Sunday, the Bible says in the scripture, he said, he told them, he said, get ye behind me, ye walker. They were walkers. This guy, I'm so sorry for taking much of your time. These guys, they walk in church. They serve in church. But Jesus Christ was telling them, he said, on that day, I will say, get ye behind me. Ye are walker, but your works have been filthy with iniquity. And they begin to justify themselves by what they did. They said, but we, we raised the dead in your name. But we did miracles in your name. So these guys, they were justifying their work with God based on the results they were seeing. <laughs> Brethren, blessing. That's why when I see people, when they give, see, I'm not against testimony. God is a giver. I've said that many times. He's a giver, but he's a lover first. He's a father. He gives. And that's why you can see someone, God can bless a person and still not be happy with that person. What about that? I can have a child. If my child is not doing what I want, it doesn't mean I can still, I will feed them. I will buy clothes for them. But meanwhile, I might not still be happy with the way they are living. Please, I'm begging you. I'm begging in the name of God. Take this thing very, look, look at what our sister said. My twin, that was my twin with Kenny. She was the one that, you know, was the second speaker. God chooses down to prepare us about our heart. And now she's talking about repentance. Now Sister Shea is talking about the rapture. All of these things, they all come together. They all come together. Please, please. I've, I've shared my story with you guys before. Strip your heart naked before God. Naked. This, this heart, you see, this heart. You can, I'm people can be clapping for you. And the, at the same time, that heart is going to hell. People can be clapping, you are wearing Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all of these things, and still you can give testimony of the blessings, but where is your heart with God? That's why when, testimonies of blessings doesn't move me anymore. I'm telling you, it doesn't move me because I have seen that life is beyond blessing. Life is beyond blessing. Life is beyond blessing. And I said something a couple of weeks ago, everything, including the blessing, you will live on this earth, but your walk with God, that is what you will bring before the Father. Everything you ever acquire that you will leave for the children, you are leaving them on earth, but how you live, you will bring it before God. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. Gone are the days where people are playing church. That days, those days are gone. So, Please, guys, I want us to ask God, Lord, have mercy upon me. That's, that's the only prayer we have to pray tonight, and we're going to ramp up. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy upon my disobedience. Have mercy upon, I'm, I've been deceiving myself too long. People see me in church, but I know the kind of life, the kind of movies I watch, the website I go, the kind of life I'm living, the places I sneak into that I cannot share. Lord, have mercy. Please begin to pray that, Lord, have mercy upon me. Show me your mercy, O oh God. I still have unforgiveness. I can't forgive easily. I am proudful, very arrogant. Lord, have mercy. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, I will say thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for who you continue to be. Father, be that exalted. Thank you for speaking through your daughters tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Father, let your name alone be exalted, O oh God. 
We cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. And I visit us tonight, like you visited Sister Sheyi last night. Visit us tonight, oh God. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Reveal yourself. Visit. 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 Visit us, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Please don't forget what our second speaker said. God still loves you. When God loves, he sent he sent his agents, his messengers to bring warning. Warning comes because of love. Including me, that I'm talking to you. I have to read all of these chapters tonight. Please take our time. Take our time. Take our time. Take our time. If you want to copy some of these scriptures, I'm going to leave this running for a while. I will advise to find time or you want to screenshot it. Take our time. Go and read all of the scriptures. I'm begging you. I'm begging you in the name of God. I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Take your walk with God more serious. Take it more serious. On that day, my wife is right here beside me. On that day, everybody will stand alone. Everybody will stand alone. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Thank you to all the speakers. God bless you all. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow night, same time. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you.